let's go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's KVA session. Uh, my name is Nikta Sarkar. I am the CFD application engineer here at Kativ. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing what's new in ANSYS Fluent 2022 R1. For those of you who are already familiar with the ANSYS environment, uh, you may already know that um, ANSYS releases two different versions every year, one towards the beginning of the year and one during the summer months. So this presentation is going to be the updates in the first release of the year, uh, 2022 R1. Um, I'm not going to be covering every single update in ANSYS Fluent because each one of those topics can be a session on its own. But the goal is to give you guys a high level summary of some important updates, improvements, capabilities that you might be commonly able to leverage or may apply to different um, applications uh, or relevant use cases. If you need more information about a specific application uh, or if you need more help regarding a topic that I cover today and how it applies to your CFD simulation, then feel free to reach out to us. My colleague is going to leave our um, uh, contact information in the chat window. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So for today's agenda, we're gonna be covering some updates, firstly about the new multi-GPU solver that Fluent gives you access to. Um, this can significantly accelerate your CFD simulations. Uh, we know that uh, CFD simulations take up a lot of computational resources and time. So any way to reduce that effort is always welcome. So I will be covering that. Uh, there have also been a lot of enhancements with the user experience in terms of the GUI. Uh, these are both related to the case setup and some capabilities in the post-processing side uh, I'll also be covering a major update related to fluent meshing for watertight geometries. And then there is something called the aerospace workflow, um, a new GUI enhancement for the fluent solution mode, wherein you can conveniently set up your external aero simulations um, and work with some um, templates to post process and run your simulations more conveniently. Uh, there have been some improvements on the heat transfer, um, more specifically conjugate heat transfer simulations as well. So we'll cover that. And then lastly, we'll talk about some solver improvements for the multi-phase VOF formulation, uh, both on the implicit side and explicit side. Um, we'll have time for Q&A towards the end of the KVA. If you have any questions about the topics that I'm covering, uh, feel free to leave the questions in the Q&A box and I'll get to it towards the end of the meeting, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started initially with the GPU acceleration. Now, this is something that I'm really excited about um, as a frequent Fluent user myself. Um, oftentimes, you know, customers will talk about the uh, huge requirements in terms of CPU cores uh, that they might have to invest in especially if they're doing a simulation that has a large number of cells or is solving a lot of different equations. Um, and a concern is always the cost associated, um, not only with um, you know, having those extra CPU cores, but there's also you know, HPC licensing, there's also the power consumption aspect of it. And uh, most importantly, there's time because you know, it'll take more time um, you know, if you do not have the computational resources necessary. So what Fluent has done in this latest release is it allows you to access something called a multi-GPU solver. Now, this is in beta mode because there are still cases that are being tested, um, validated. Um, and with each different release, uh, you will see significant improvements in the capability of this multi-GPU solver. But what I would encourage for those of you who already have access to Fluent is to start your Fluent simulation uh, in this beta mode. You can turn it on using the launcher window of Fluent and see if it helps um, you know, accelerate your current simulations. There are some metrics that you can see on the slide. Um, this car over here, it had an external aero CFD application with 105 million cells. 
And you'll notice that we ran the case um, on an A100 GPU card. And each iteration took around 22 seconds. And the entire duration from initialization to conversions only took 20 minutes. And it is incredible that you know um, a CFD case with 105 million cells was able to converge so quickly. Uh, at the bottom here, you can also see the comparison between using GPUs to CPUs. The first three bars are with standard CPU cores. And you do see some scaling you know, as you keep switching between different types of processors. But then um, look at the jump when you start using GPUs. Um, the scaling is incredible, right? So this is what we are trying to do. This is something that ANSYS is already doing in the discovery space. But as and when we keep improving uh, and adding more uh, capabilities to the multi-GPU solver in Fluent, you should be able to leverage GPUs um, for running your CFD cases. Now, one important note is that this is not applicable to all different types of CFD simulation, because remember the CFD physics is dependent on the solver that you're using. Uh, so for now, the only supported capabilities are listed over here. Um, it can work for subsonic compressible flows for ideal gas simulations, uh, mainly for you know heat transfer applications or you know aero applications. Uh, but it does have some limitations in terms of doing something uh, too complex, say for example combustion or reacting flows, etc. Um, so if you're doing something that is you know basic conjugate heat transfer external aero, do try out the multi GPU solver and see what sort of scaling you can get. Um, instead of using CPUs, okay? All right, so now that we've covered the GPU, let's talk a little bit about Fluent GUI itself and what are the different enhancements that have been introduced in the GUI. Um, now, I have worked in the underhood thermal uh, space wherein we used to deal with a lot of different components, a lot of different cell zones, a uh, lot of assignments for boundary conditions um, and different cell regions. Um, in the latest version of 2022 R1, what they've done is they've made significant improvements in the input output performance for cases with large number of zones. So if you have 10,000, 20,000 cell zones and you feel like you know the solver would get buggy or maybe the GUI would not be very fast in pulling up information about an individual zone, then you'll see that with 2022, that has improved uh, by leaps and bounds. You can see what sort of improvement we've seen uh, in 2022. The mesh display, contour display, vector display have all increased by more than 70%. Um, so there's an appreciable difference in terms of the speed of just loading the case in um, Fluent and then being able to work with it for case setup. Uh, this difference is more um, visible if you're working with more than 10,000 zones. Uh, if you have just you know two, three zones in your CFD simulation, then you may not be able to tell a difference because even in the baseline case or even in previous versions, uh, you may not have suffered any lag uh, in terms of accessing the GUI features. But if you have more than 10,000 cells, then um, you'll start to see a, a difference for the better. The other thing is also the inclusion of something called embedded windows. Um, now, I think even in the past versions, in the past one or two versions, you had the option of embedding windows but they were relegated to a reserved window. Um, and sometimes you would want um, a particular graphic to be embedded in say, for example, the scale residuals. Why would you want to do that? Because maybe you're monitoring the trend of a solution as the simulation convergence. Uh, you could be looking at the velocity contour as the residuals start converging. And in those situations, it might be helpful to have your graphics, have your post-processing results, um, you know, available along with that residual window so that you can compare the solution side by side. So what you basically do is you create any sort of result in your Fluent simulation, and then you right click on it and you click on embed in. Uh, whichever windows are available to you at that time, 
uh, including the residual plot will show up in this list over here. When you click on it, you will see that that particular contour will now be visible along with the uh, scaled residuals or whichever other contour you're looking at that time. Uh, so this is a very handy feature that I have been using frequently now that I've started uh, uh, adopting uh, 2022 for my current CFD simulations. The other improvement is also when you have a lot of different cell zones in your domain and you want to look at the quality of each and every cell zone instead of looking at the quality of the overall mesh, uh, you have the option now of right-clicking on any particular zone, whether it is a solid zone or a fluid zone, and clicking on info. When you click on info, it shows you what is the cell count of that particular zone and what is the orthogonal quality and if there are any poor cells in here. So this can be very handy if you're trying to find, okay, which particular area do I need to sort of, you know, look at the mesh in or redo the mesh if you do have poor elements in your domain, okay? The other thing is also now you can um, record pulsed path line animation. This was not available in previous versions, but now you have the ability of recording this in various formats. I think the AVI format and all other common formats for animation also apply for this particular capability. Now, another thing is, for example, you have embedded windows, or maybe you just have uh, different graphic windows um, open in your Fluent GUI. And you want to compare the results or maybe the mesh and the results um, simultaneously. Uh, you now have the option of synchronizing all these individual windows so that whatever you do in your um, single screen gets copied over simultaneously on all other screens. Uh, so the way to do that would be to, you know, have embedded windows or different windows in your GUI. And then you could just right click anywhere on the screen and you have the option of choosing synchronize and it says synchronize all windows. So let us go ahead and see how this works. So you'll see that all these windows are initially um, in a different orientation, but then you go ahead and synchronize them. And now whatever you do, uh, with the mouse in any one window gets mapped over to all the other windows as well. And you can even um, move out of the synchronization or you can move out any one of these individual windows if you wanted to. Uh, that option is also there. You could stop the synchronization at any point. But if you're looking to do quick post processing without moving to CFD post, then this is a very good way of um, looking at the results. So you could see that, you know, how um, you could synchronize specific windows if you wanted to, or just stop the synchronization altogether. One other improvement that I have been using frequently is something called enhanced plots. I think they started introducing enhanced plots uh, one or two versions earlier, but now you know um, you should be able to enable this using preferences. So if you go to your Fluent uh, window and um, choose preferences, you can go to appearance and then check mark this box called enhanced plots. Now, what exactly are enhanced plots? Uh, these are interactive plots that will allow you to change the properties of either the legend or the axis or the plots um, that you see on the screen interactively without you having to stop the simulation and then, you know, uh, make the changes manually. So this is better in terms of visibility as well. Um, what you can do is you can go ahead and um, click on any one particular plot. If you hover over it, it'll show you the value. You can also select and deselect the different legends uh, so that only the plots that you're interested in are visible. You may also want to double click on the axis itself um, and it opens an edit window wherein you can change the properties of the axis on the fly. 
And that is also true for the plots themselves. If you double click on them, you should be able to change the properties. Here you can zoom in on the interactive plot, right? You could just left click and drag a box and whichever section you're looking at will be zoomed in so that you could look at the values more specifically. So like I said, you can change the plots themselves by choosing different options from the edit window. Now, one limitation with the enhanced plots is that I think that there is a threshold of the number of points that you can plot on uh, in the enhanced mode uh, for now. I think they are working on improving that. And with the next release, maybe uh, we remove all thresholds. But I think after 50,000 points on the plot, uh, it automatically reverts back to your classic plot, which doesn't have these capabilities. Um, but if you're, uh, if you're just plotting less than 50,000 points, then you should be able to take advantage of this capability. All right. So those were some key important enhancements on the GUI side inside Fluent itself. Uh, but let's talk about Fluent meshing because um, there is an important update related to shared topology uh, inside the meshing mode. Uh, this is applicable for watertight geometry workflow. Um, and what it allows you to do is now you can have a different method of applying shared topology in fluent meshing that was not present in earlier versions. The specific mode is called interface connect. And uh, this is very helpful for those cases in which perhaps your geometry is a little too complicated and maybe you tried to share topology inside space claim, um, but it wasn't um, you know, working out well, or even if you did force share, in space claim, once you start meshing in Fluent, it may give you an error saying that the topology wasn't shared in space claim. So for those sort of situations, um, this interface connect method uh, should prove to be very handy. Uh, now, those of you who are unfamiliar with the term shared topology, I just want to give a little bit of a background uh, because I often get these questions from new CFD users. Um, in order for many of the uh, uh, applications wherein interfaces don't work, wherein you need to have conformal meshing, um, we used to recommend that you do share topology uh, in space claim itself. Um, and what that basically means that all the common edges, all the common faces are talking to each other. So that when you go to mesh it, uh, the mesh in one region is connected at the nodes to the mesh in the adjacent region. Okay, so that is what a conformal mesh is. And that shared topology requirement, uh, we would advise that, you know, uh, users try to do that inside the geometry cleanup tool itself, instead of doing it in fluent meshing. Um, in fluent meshing, there was a method called join intersect, which would be able to detect common faces and edges. But that capability has significantly improved with the addition of Interface Connect. Now, what Interface Connect does is it allows you to choose between three different modes, okay? Uh, that'll help fluent meshing detect where shared topology needs to be applied, okay? It can either be manual, wherein you choose the label of the zones that you want to share. Say, for example, you know that these two faces are overlapping, that they need to be connected at this particular junction, then you can choose those labels from the manual panel, or you can automatically apply interface connect in the overall domain, wherein fluent meshing will detect which faces are overlapping or which edges are common, and then apply shared topology automatically. You also have something called um, an automatic mode using connect topology. This is applicable for those cases wherein you've tried to do force share inside space claim, and then you bring over the model to fluent meshing. So because you did force share inside space claim, now fluent meshing knows where you are intending to apply shared topology. 
So these are the three different ways you can apply it. On this slide, I have captured, you know, the screenshots from my fluent meshing workflow. So you can see that after you describe the geometry, uh, there's an option called apply shared topology. If you've already done shared topology inside space claim, uh, you may have ignored this in the past, right? Um, but if you think that there is uh, a need for doing shared topology in fluent meshing, now you can choose this guy. And instead of the join intersect method uh, from the drop down menu, you can select interface connect. So this is the automatic method, and then this is the manual method. In the manual method, you can choose the labels um, at which you want to apply um, shared topology. And in the automatic method, based on the tolerance, it will automatically detect where all the overlap occurs. So in this visual over here, you can see that there were a lot of complicated geometries, more than 100 bodies, and all of them were shared inside fluent meshing quite easily with the help of Interface Connect. So this is a very uh, convenient feature uh, for those people who are working with complex geometries or maybe the CAD is not too clean and you don't wanna spend time uh, trying to fix everything in the geometry cleanup stage. Okay, all right. Now let's talk about the Aero workspace. Uh, this is also quite, exciting and brand new uh, for people who are working in the external aero uh, fields. Um, usually in the past, uh, when you do an external aero problem, you would set up the CFD uh, like you would set up any other CFD, right? You would look at the CFD terminology, you would use the GUI, etc. But sometimes, especially for, you know, external aero cases, because, you know, um, it's such a sensitive solution, you need a little bit more, um, you know, TLC to sort of optimize the settings, uh, choose the right solver um, uh, features, um, you know, set up the post-processing or the case using the terminology that you would most commonly find in that industry. So what Fluent has allowed uh, in 2022 is from the launcher window, you can choose the Aero workspace and it'll open up Fluent in a completely different mode, wherein you know, you'll have a template um, somewhat similar to the meshing templates that you see in Fluent Meshing, wherein you can uh, automate or you know, conveniently set up a lot of the uh, processes required for doing an aero analysis. Um, and these are sort of streamlined for aerospace CFD. So the terminology and the steps are more fine-tuned to what you would usually do uh, while doing an aero CFD. Uh, this has you know, some of the best practices and models that you would need to run a simulation like that and achieve robust convergence. Uh, so it automates the setup of some solver settings and some output parameters. If you want to you know, easily output CLCD plots, uh, this type of a workflow helps a lot. Uh, so here you can see a visual of what this Aero workspace looks like. Uh, it's still new, uh, you know, we're still playing with it. But from what I understand, you know, they've made some improvements to the density based solver and some of the settings inside this workflow are automatically optimized. So you should be able to get good convergence. Um, you can um, do component specific setup and post processing. Some of the terminology might be more familiar to those who are working in that space, right? And um, you can also have uh, automated journal and you know scripting in this particular uh, space, so it can come in really handy um, for those um, who are doing such high-speed flows. Uh, so this is really exciting, and uh, we are encouraging our customers to start using this and give us feedback. Uh, so let us know if you are working in this field and if you need more help with it, we would be happy to, you know, um, uh, help you out and uh, give you more information about the specifics. The other thing about Fluent is one important update that um, I am very thankful for is the introduction of 
shell conduction with non-conformal interfaces. We talked about conformality a little bit earlier, uh, wherein I talked about um, how the mesh needs to be connected uh, between adjacent cell zones. Um, in the past, there was a limitation that shell conduction would not be used with non-conformal interfaces. The mesh had to be conformal at those locations. Uh, but with 2022, they've introduced shell conduction with non-conformal meshing. It's a similar workflow to what you would do uh, for a standard shell conduction boundary condition assignment for a wall. Um, the only difference is now, because it is non-conformal, you'll probably have an interface um, in the setup panel and you could go to the parent interface with the two shadow walls wherein you'd be applying um, this shell conduction. So those of you who are doing shell conduction today might already be familiar with this window uh, wherein you enable shell conduction and then specify the number of layers that you would want uh, to introduce. And so this is still the same. The only thing is that now we are choosing this for an interface instead of a coupled wall. Um, at the bottom over here, you can see some post-processing results uh, for shell conduction in a non-conformal mesh versus shell conduction in a conformal mesh. Uh, you can see that both the results look similar. Um, so from a validation standpoint, um, this is just as good as doing it for a conformal mesh. Uh, so if you're working with complex geometries that have a lot of different layers and you don't want to individually do shared topology or connect them uh, in the pre-processing stage, now you have the ability to create an interface inside Fluent and then assign shell conduction inside the GUI itself. Another improvement in terms of heat transfer is that for Monte Carlo and discrete ordnance radiation model, now the flow boundaries can be transparent. In earlier releases, you know, they could only be opaque. Um, but as you can see from the GUI screenshot over here, now they can be transparent that allows radiation energy to penetrate through flow boundaries, um, either at the entry or the exit. So this is again, um, you know, a convenient feature for those uh, who are working with radiation and their CFD cases. Um, I often get the question of how to, you know, transfer certain features uh, from ice pack to fluent in terms of uh, perhaps importing a PCB board um, from ice pack into fluent. So you have that ability now in 2022 when you could do a PCB analysis inside Fluent by importing it from IcePack. Um, this might be necessary if, for example, you are adding additional physics to your CFD simulation, uh, which may only be available in Fluent and not in IcePack, because IcePack does have some limitations in terms of um, you know, CFD physics. So what you can do is you can import an ice pack file inside Fluent now by clicking on this model specific option of PCB model and then reading in the board configuration file. So you can see at the bottom over here, you had thermal conductivity from ice pack that got mapped over to the Fluent side of things. This is only available for PCB analysis right now. So keep that in mind. And when you are importing the board config file from ice pack, there might be some mismatch in the zone nomenclature. So if you are appending that ice pack case with other um, meshes inside Fluent, you may have to fix the zone names so that everything uh, is mapped over accurately. Uh, but this is again an exciting new feature if you are trying to get a, a full blown PCB analysis done with the help of both IcePack and Fluent, you can do a good job um, uh, in the latest release. And um, let's talk about uh, multi-phase simulations as well. Um, there have been a lot of small enhancements with the solver capabilities 
uh, both for you know the Eulerian simulations and the VOF simulations. But for today's AVA, I'm highlighting the ones related to VOF because um, that's what I've seen being more commonly used than Eulerian simulations. Uh, if you're interested about the Eulerian simulation improvements, reach out to us. I'd be happy to provide you with the slides for that as well. So volume of fluid improvements, both for the implicit formulation and explicit formulation, there have been some improvements in the latest release. Um, for the explicit formulation, what they've now started doing is instead of calculating the volume fraction at the beginning of the time step, uh, they are now calculating the volume fraction at the end. Uh, and what that allows you to do is achieve better convergence. Um, so you can see on the right over here, you know, they did a VOF simulation and they tried running it the traditional way, uh, you know, that was um, prevalent until the last release. And um, when you are trying to solve for the volume fraction at the beginning of the time step, it would diverge. But with 2022 R1, because it is because it is being calculated at the end of the time step, uh, the solution converges pretty well. Uh, so this is a, a great improvement for those who do VOF simulations often and might have seen convergence issues um, with their residuals. Uh, so you know if you try it now. Um, you should see an improvement um, in the convergence trends. The other thing is also for the implicit formulation, sometimes you know you would see the secondary phase in regions where it's not expected to be. Uh, there was some spurious second phase generation in the simulation uh, with the implicit formulation. So that has also been improved. Um, there has been some significant improvement on the solver side. And if you compare the previous convergence trends with the newer version, you'll see a, uh, a much improved prediction of volume fraction for different phases in the domain. So you can see that we don't get those um, spurious second phase results over here. So that has um, definitely improved. And what ANSYS has also done with VOF improvements is even in terms of boundary conditions um, at a pressure outlet, it now allows the user to use the values from the neighboring cell. And again, that helps with the convergence overall. Um, and um, with multi-phase simulations, convergence is a huge issue, right? Um, especially if you are um, not sure about the different types of uh, you know, phases that are in your domain and how well each of them is being accounted for. Um, so especially in the Eulerian multi-phase simulation as well, that could be a problem. Um, so overall, from a solver numerics point of view, that has improved. Um, and like I said, if you need more information about the Eulerian multi-phase simulations, feel free to reach out to us and I'll be happy to share slides with you. So to summarize, uh, we talked about a lot of different enhancements in the Fluent GUI, um, a lot of small but handy improvements in uh, case setup and post-processing. We also talked about improved shared topology in Fluent Meshing. Um, you can try it out if you've already been using shared topology in Space Claim. Uh, see if you can switch that shared topology step to fluent meshing and if it works out well for you. Um, shell conduction is now compatible with non-conformal meshes. Um, so if you are looking to do shell conduction, you don't need to worry about having a connected mesh at all overlapping faces. Um, there is a new aero workspace inside fluent for external aero simulations. And there have been improvements in VOF formulations for better convergence. Lastly, um, in the beta mode, you can use the multi-GPU solver for gaining uh, significant scalability uh, by leveraging GPUs instead of CPUs uh, for selected CFD cases. Um, so hopefully today's session gave you an overview of some major changes uh, in 2022 R1. Um, let me see if there are any questions. I don't see any questions so far, so I'll wait 
for a minute or two in case anybody needs to ask anything. I'd be happy to take those questions at this time. We do have an upcoming event coming up um, next Wednesday, um, April 13th, wherein Joshua will be talking about um, Lean Six Sigma and green manufacturing. These are all methods to you know, improve uh, your overall efficiency and effectiveness of manufacturing processes, uh, all you know, within the uh, ambit of digital manufacturing. So um, if you're interested in that, please feel free to attend. There'll also be a giveaway of $50, I've been told. So that is really exciting. Um, so hopefully you would be able to join us for that particular session. All right, I don't see any other questions in the panel. Um, if you do think of any questions, um, again, you can reach out to us at support at kativ.com and um, I can answer any questions by email. So, and I think uh, I just, my colleague just dropped the support at kativ.com contact in the box. So feel free to reach out to us. All right, um, thank you guys. Um, have a great day ahead. And uh, if you have any feedback about today's session or suggestions for um, upcoming webinar topics, um, let us know. We'll be happy to incorporate that in our KVAs going forward. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.